So I'm finally going to be sharing my birth story with you. My labor had to be induced because I was just not going into labor. I had to admit myself into hospital and they did an induction for me at midnight. And before 3 a.m., I already had started my contractions. Between 5 and 6 o'clock, I was getting regular contractions. And just after 6 a.m., I heard this sound in my ear and this vibration in my body that went and from there I just felt this gush of water coming out and my water had broken. So now basically I'm waiting to dilate just 10 centimeters so that I can go and give birth. I was doing circular motions, I was doing squats. I was walking the entire ward. I watched a YouTube video on how to basically like fasten the dilation process. I was on all fours at the stage. Mind you, I'm doing all of this while I am going through my contraction. Prior to that, I was even walking two kilometers every single day. I was eating my six dates every day. My husband and I were very busy because that also helps with softening the cervix. I was basically doing everything that was necessary to soften the cervix and allow for an easy birth, basically. They came, they checked me, I was at one centimeter dilated. 2 p.m. they come and they check me, I've only dilated two centimeters. Then it was 5 p.m. my gynae comes, they check me again. I haven't dilated any further. I was still stuck on two centimeters. It's basically 17 hours later since the induction and I've only dilated two centimeters when I should have been dilated 10 centimeters so that I can give birth. The doctor tells me, listen, it's almost 12 hours since your water broke. You only dilated two centimeters. That's not a good sign we will have to do an emergency c-section for you i'm there i'm crying i'm like no come on just give me another chance give me two more hours let's see how far we can get then he's just like no your water broke almost 12 hours ago and there's a risk of infection to baby also you've only dilated two centimeters now what are the chances that you'll actually get to 10 You've been doing this for the past 17 hours. If you even get to 10, you're going to be so exhausted. And there's also a potential of a dry birth, which apparently is a very, very uncomfortable birth. The truth is that I really wanted to give natural birth. I mean, I did prep my mind for a potential C-section. But, you know, when the reality of it hit, I was just like, give me more time. Let me try harder. There was at some point where I was so mad at my body and I was just like, how do you fail me like this? Like we work so hard, you know, we prepped so much and you could only get to two centimeters. It was a very emotional moment, um, but I had to make peace with the fact that I had to go into an emergency C-section. And then I was like, okay, wait. Let me get my makeup done. I'm going to at least get my makeup done if I'm going to have a C-section. So they gave me like half an hour and I was there putting on my makeup to look cute. Um, <laughs> I remember, I actually remember when I got in the room, then the nurses were like, oh, sister, a whole face beat. And I was like, yes, girl. Because, you know, I had this bit of disappointment, but I felt like if I was doing my makeup sort of like there was something very comforting in that and I just I took solace in it so I had to go in and get the epidural done first mind you I'm still going through contractions so I tell the lady and I'm just like I'm having contractions and you need to push this needle this huge ass needle into me and at some point when i felt her touch me i basically just like left my body um because i was like in a contraction while she was busy 
doing the epidural for me and if you know about the epidural if they have to do something wrong you can basically just get paralyzed so me like just twitching or over moving or something in my mind was just like i left my body i allowed her to do the injection while i had a contraction so that was one intense moment and then the actual c-section it's like you know when you go for an extraction you're numb but you can feel the pulling and the tugging that happens so i could feel i was numb but i could feel when they were pressing and pulling and doing things there was one stage that i remember so clearly where this lady was like pressing onto my chest so hard and the next thing i see this baby is crying and is in front of me and um i looked at him and then i got this really really intense pain that started on the right hand side of my chest i'm like how hectic is this pain because they numbed me so why am i feeling pain like that's the first thing that my brain is thinking and then i um i'm trying to voice and say ah there's this incredible intense pain that's and then the next thing i feel i just i just conk like i just conk and i think they must have given me a shot of morphine but when i woke up again i was in the room and uh they had the baby on my boob and i'm trying to give the baby milk so i missed the whole thing off you know where you get that family picture where you're lying there and you're like smile and you're holding the baby and dad's there but anyway my baby came out healthy i was fine after a few hours i was alive and okay <laughs> um and the motherhood journey had just started. After that, it took a lot of time for me to just, you know, go back into my body and actually give myself grace and give myself thanks because they don't say this, but giving birth is like having one foot in the grave and one foot, you know, out here still on earth. And the thing that we moms need to go through to birth the baby is so intense so hearing other people's birth stories thereafter was very reflective for me because basically baby was born at 3.75 kgs i don't know if my body was going to be able to actually birth him naturally to be honest without it potentially incurring some damage sometimes there's a lot of internal bleeding because the baby is so big and one of my cousins even said to me i think your body was protecting you i don't think that you should be mad at it i had to look at my body and i had to say thank you so much for keeping baby safe for growing him to the 3.75 kgs that he was thank you for protecting me from potentially a damaging natural birth because some people rupture you know some people get ripped really really badly so that was my birth story healing from the c-section was very very difficult i ended up getting a hematoma because i obviously hadn't prepped I prepped mentally for a c-section but i didn't do actual research about a c-section and when you have a c-section how you're supposed to for example move around get on and off a bed there was a lot that i could have researched um you know to prep myself for the c-section healing which i didn't do i was very on the move very busy very mom mode because now i have this little baby that needs everything done i just went for my six week checkup doc says we're not there but we're getting there and that's what's important um 
you know, I'm just being gentle to myself, I'm being kind to myself. Um, I'm still very much thankful for my body and grateful for the experience of birth and just absolutely indulging in motherhood and the fact that I have this little cuddle buddy who is just a cutie pie bear that depends on dad and me so very much. I really hope that my birth story can inspire you or just help you prep better when it is your turn, you know, to go through whatever journey you need to go through. Thank you for taking time to listen to my birth story of all the stories that you could be listening to right now. Um, yeah, we'll continue to see each other on the gram. I hope that you enjoy whatever's left of your day.